Brothers and sisters, welcome back. Continuing with War on the Saints book study. Uh, let me get it together here. We're going to begin in Interference with the Head, page 166 of chapter 7. My apologies. I had to take a, a few days off. I was overwhelmed with a lot of things to do, but we're back. War on the Saints, the book study, Interference with the Head, uh, subtitle, page 166, chapter 7. So God bless you all. I pray that you enjoy the reading and the book study, some things I might intervene from my heart in. But uh, for the next six pages, there's really no scripture. So let's begin. In an infer interference with the head, the jaws can be moved. Let me undo my screen so you guys can see me. In interference with the head, the jaws can be moved by the spirits of evil. And I've seen that so many times over the, the long period of time I've been in this ministry. So this book is pretty spot on with some of the stuff it's telling us. And brothers and sisters that are in this ministry really need this book read and studied several times. Otherwise, they're going to make a lot of mistakes. And the nerves of the faces are manipulated in the production of smiles, which appear at unsuitable moments, manifestingly apart from the cognizance of the person. Of such a nature... It is a mechanical smile when the facial muscles seen made of elastic or of a stiffening countenance, which makes the face appear hard or cruel, dried up and withered or painfully miserable. So they, they can, the evil spirits can control and do a lot of uh, contorting of our face muscles because they're within us. And demon possession does affect the face. And remember, it's not total possession. It's just a part or due time where you're being demonized and cause expressions upon which it may be opposed to the true character of the person that normally doesn't manifest that way with facial movements. And I have a lot of recordings of this, brothers and sisters, and sometimes it's just not pleasant, in which it may be opposed to the true character of the person. Other effects upon the face produced by the controlling spirits may be repellent or beautiful and appear natural and physical. I have physically seen demons make a person more beautiful than what they appear to be to entice the people that are looking at them, such as blushing red in pure look or an angelic look of heavenly beauty with exquisite smiles and light as of they are of glory, which may suddenly change into a stern, unbending look with lips set and brow furrowed, or into a dark cloud as a sudden storm and tempest. In the drainness, the drainage of vitality caused by the grip of these evil spirits or the spirits of evil, the temples may be sunken and the hair becomes prematurely gray. In a sudden manifestation of the intruders, the nostrils may become tightened, the scent deadened, and the breathing can be gasping and short with choking, suffocating feelings and even noises in the head. So demons do make things, you know, remember they operate in our nervous system, in our brain, and they can make some weird things, weird contortions. And anyone that's been in any real live deliverances has gotten the experience to recognize what demons can do to people. Now I'm going over to page 167. Another subtitle, brothers and sisters, interference with the eyes. So they can even interfere with our eyes, brothers and sisters. No part of the nerves in the head are more affected than those of the eyes. 
for there can come about a passivity of the eyes, which permits them to be moved by evil spirits. That's why sometimes you see them roll up in the back of the person's head, and all you see is white. You don't see the pupils. And forced to see visible things apart from the use of volition. So they can give you hallucinations. And you think you're seeing something that you're not. In reading, the eyes can be moved to see the printed words and rapidly skim the pages of matter without any of it entering into the mind. In other words, you're reading so fast, you don't even hold on to what you're reading and making an impression upon the memory. This is important. It is important in connection with the use of the eyes to notice whether mental action always confirms or governs, excuse me, the movements or whether they look at objects independently, independently of the intelligent volition. For evil spirits, interference is most marked when the eyes roam about while the man is speaking to another person or gaze upon or downward or in any direction without any cause, oftentimes in a most unseemingly or discourteous manner. Particularly in the use of the eyes by evil spirits manifested in a set or a fixed gaze upon various things or upon the faces of others. The latter is especially dangerous when the person is compelled by this fixicity of gaze to take unknowingly a mediumistic attitude to another. Any persistent drawing of the eyes to another face should be instantly resisted especially in meetings where supernatural powers are manifestingly present and a fixed gaze in listening to a speaker should be avoided. If it has the effects of causing non-action of the mind and a dazed con condition as it opens the listener to the workings of the evil spirits through his passivity. Let me read that again. It has the effect of causing non-action, not using your mind, and a dazed condition as it opens the listener to the workings of evil spirits through his passivity. In other words, your own passivity. In the same way, speakers in such gatherings should take care lest the e spirits of evil find opportunity to use their eyes and fixity of concentration upon the people to sway them by their power and thus hinder the intelligent opening of their minds to the words, brothers and sisters, that are being spoken. Turning to page uh, 168 right now, as I'm continuing, and in acute uh, demonic possession, the eyes are affected very markedly. They are forced to see evil things and have and bad things as much as they affect the person and make them fidgety and complaining the eyes cannot look straight into another's face nor indeed look at anything without an attack of some time produced by the spirits of evil these attacks may cause the person to look guilty in the eyes of others when there is no ground for doing so there are two kinds of concentration, brothers and sisters, physical through the eyes and mental by the mental vision. The man himself is only acting in an action of the body when concentration of the mind and will is at the lack of his every action. Visions may be physical, mental, or even spiritual. In the physical vision, the eyes are needed. In the mental, the eyes of the mind. And in the spiritual, the inward vision of the spiritual man. When evil spirits control the physical eyes, visions of supernatural and natural things and beings, or natural beings and things, appear before them. 
And in an ordinary matter of life, things appear different from what they really are. The man receives impressions of things contrary to reality, such as the panel of a door appearing like a cross, lights in the sky and various figures, etc. The man declares he sees these things, but he does not know that evil spirits can present them to his vision. The eyesight of necessity is affected by the manipulation of the eyes, and there are general feelings of weakness. Things look misty, even blurred and undefined. There may be short-sightedness and instability to con concentrate on any small object. Concentration of the eyes is painful and difficult. The man complains of the light, the tiredness of the eyes, and dark spots appear before them, either stable or moving near or far. Symptoms which might be looked upon as purely physical if it were not for the supernatural element that was accompanying them. And I'm over on page 169 now. And the next subtitle is the ears and hearing affected. So this is a, a part here in this chapter where we're going to learn that your ears and your hearing can be affected. And I've seen that so many times in preaching, teaching, deliverance. And even when I'm preaching, sometimes the demonized people that are in the audience often hear things that weren't said. And, and, and that's just because they've got evil spirits trying to block them. And in the Bible, it tells us that our ears are dulled in the book of Hebrews. So the ears and the hearing affected this sub, subtitle here over on page 169. I'm going to read, in interference with the ears, entire deafness may be caused by evil spirits located where? In the nerves of the ear. Or there may be degrees of interference with the hearing, such as a loss of words, so that in listening, there are moments when sentences or words are not heard at all. Or there's a failure to grasp clearly what others say, because the person hears partly what the speaker says and partly what the evil spirit inserts or suggest to the mind. Well, that happens to a lot of us. Hence, misunderstandings of giving instructions or clearly expressed language of others. This also causes an indisposition, indisposition to listen to others speaking and restless impatience, which cannot wait for them to complete their sentences or communications because the intruders are thrusting in their own suggestions to the mind and claiming attention to their speaking. Once again, I'm going to read that part over so you can get an idea that sometimes we're battling the spirits and people because the intruders are thrusting into their own suggestions to the mind and claiming attention to their speaking. The believer has a sense of double listening, so to speak, which is an interior and exterior listening at one and the same time. That is, he may be trying to listen to feelings and movements within while listening to the voice of others outside. This causes difficulty in listening to music, speaking, and reading out loud. There is also a deadness to exterior sounds because of the buzzing in the ears and the sound in the ears is stronger than the sound outside with the effect and apparent absent mindedness. Well, that's a strong word. The man needs to be released from listening to the supernatural speaking within himself before he is free to listen to that which is external. So, you can never hear until you get rid of the enemy that's operating basically on your ears and your hearing is being affected. So let's go to the next paragraph here today. Evil spirits interfering with the sensory nerves. So what the 
what the writer is telling us is what they discovered at the end of the 1800s, that evil spirits interfering with the sensory nerves of uh, the states here in the book, bottom paragraph, the ears render exterior sounds acute and force consciousness of them, producing confusion and irritation. The exaggerated sense of sound rendering concentration to be difficult. Now I'm going to turn the page to 170 as we finish this subtitle on the ears and the dulling. They also make strange sounds by interference with the sensory nerves. The man declaring that he heard voices, thunder, rustling as a dress, etc., which no one around him hears. So anyway, we come up one page 170. We're going to the buzz of evil spirits speaking. So there's been a lot of pages here dedicated to this. Uh, I guess it's the experience they all witnessed, and it's been penned and written in the book War on the Saints. And so the buzz of evil spirits, it's on page 170, subtitle, once again, the buzz of evil spirits speaking. This persistent buzz in the ears, I wonder if that has anything to do with tinnitus makes the victim preoccupied and almost unconsciously shake his head as it is shaking off something which is annoying him. It is so distracting that he's obliged to speak aloud to himself to make an impression on his own mind. He must read aloud in order to take in the sense of what he might, may be reading, it says, or speak out loud to apprehend his own speech because of the confusion caused in his mind by the inward buzz. I just want to praise God that I don't have an inward buzz. You know, I have other things wrong with my hearing, but it's not demons. Of the pers persecuting spirits because of the confusion, also fresh ground. Listen to this one, brothers and sisters. Fresh ground has been given to the power of darkness for deeper possession through the distraction caused by their interference. Well, that's a mouthful. Let me read that again. Because of this confusion, so you've got to read these chapters over until it sinks into, you, sinks into your being, of the persecuting spirits because of this confusion, also fresh ground is given to the powers of darkness for deeper possession through the distraction caused by their interference. The cause of this is that unknowingly the believer has lent his ears to evil spirits listening to their words and suggestions, often because he believed he was listening to God or even himself. This comes particularly when they have grown in a habit of listening for an inner voice or an alert inside listening, which in time enables the evil spirits to dull, and what does it say here? Dull the outer ear, because there's an outer ear and there's an inner ear and there's nerves and acute attention to outer communication or listening inwardly to feelings. And we all know you can't, it's not about feelings at all. If you're thinking it's a feeling inside of you and you're feeling all these things that the, the book has already taught us, sensuous feelings, that's definitely evil spirits. God doesn't operate like that. Okay, drawings while at the same time listening for voices, texts, messages from without. Bottom of 170, going forward here. Description of the speaking of evil spirits. Now they're going to describe what the speaking is all about, brothers and sisters. The speaking of evil spirits may be described somewhat as follows. One. It is not like the vocal speaking of a human being, which must always be stronger than the speaking of spirits, because spirits have no force of breath. Therefore, if a man speaks out loud, he can always drown the speaking of evil spirits. On the same principle, 
a man can also, I'm on page 171 right now for everybody following with their War in the Saints books. On the same principle, a man can also drown the voice of the Holy Spirit because he, he is spirit and his speaking is always in the spirit or through his conscience. Two, it resembles more the thinking of a person or the speaking in oneself when the words are not uttered through the lips. When evil spirits are speaking to the inner ear, it seems like a ceaseless buzz of inner words. So that's how they're describing the buzz. It's a senseless buzz of inner words, or possibly you're not taking those thoughts captive to the word of God. You know, that's a good way of looking at it. But it seems like a ceaseless buzz of inner words, apparently belonging to the person himself, yet not from his mind, nor the result of a mental action, nor from his will, nor even expressing his own personal ideas or desires. So when this buzz of objectionable or annoying or irresponsible words are thus in an indefinite way, claiming the inner attention of the man and he has outer claims to deal with, he is liable to speak out loud with a strong voice, so to overpower or dull the inner clamor without being conscious that he's raising his voice or why he's doing so. So now we go to the, the next subtitle and let me turn the page a minute and we're gonna end in the next subtitle tonight actually it's yes yeah, it's, it's evening now here in new jersey unconscious use of a loud voice now if you really don't have a hearing problem the brain doesn't hear and you don't hear properly so you know for years people thought i was being really crazy and i'm not i have a a condition that's been proven that I'm, I'm I'm going a little deaf, so please pray for me. Unknowingly, the man is making an impression it's just on his own mind through his own ear by using a loud voice. Otherwise, his dulled mind would not be able to take it in or retain what he is saying or get the impression into his mind. Do you ever meet someone? that was pretty much deaf. They couldn't hear the level they were talking and they talk loud. And that's just the way it is because they can't even hear the level they're talking. You know, right now I'm blessed. I'm, I have a set of hearing aids in me. I am a, a combat veteran. I've been tested and everything else. And it's not that God can't heal me. God's teaching me that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. It also teaches me that many people that know me see a difference when I have the hearing aids in. And it's not demons right now. That's why not everything's a demon. The believer may not be conscious of the inner buzz of the evil spirits and not conscious that his voice is raised to express his own thoughts in an audible speech or know why he finds himself obliged to speak and clear in his own thinking. And so it says here, unconsciousness is a symptom of the depth of the evil spirit's possession. Now, when you, when you understand what uh, possession is, it's just a part of our body. If you want to know what real possession is, it's a person that's not saved and they're just totally out of control spiritually, you know, like the demoniac. And it took the savior to deliver the man and he wanted to go with Jesus. And Jesus said, no, go, go show everybody what I just did for you. You know, and it took God to make that happen. And, and, you know, I, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ now. And you've got to rightly divide the word of God, brothers and sisters. So the depth of the evil spirit's possession and the unconscious facts concerning himself is as determined to the person in attempts of strangers to enter in their house would be 
to get to the householder who is oblivious to all sounds. Consciousness of all things connected with the inner life and environment is as keenly needed by the believer and should be cultivated by him as consciousness of all exterior matters connected with the duties of his life. Unconsciousness by men of how they themselves act and speak, think or appear in oblivion to all that is patent to others. And on the other hand is unconscious, self-consciousness or ultra consciousness of the actions of self may also result of the work of deceiving spirits. And some symptoms of thus listening to supernatural voices may be described as one, difficulty in listening to others. Uh, the face screwed up in difficulty of grasping what is said a sense of dullness or heaviness in the ear or ears. So it could be one or two ears that are being uh, infected. And um, I'm going to continue here because it says, depending upon the person has other symptoms of evil spirits possession or whether he is normally, is in a normally, natural condition. I want to do one more section here. Uh, varied symptoms or verified symptoms, excuse me. There are other verified symptoms showing disturbance of the entire system of the man when dominated by evil spirits in possession and affecting his muscles, his hands, his fingers, feet, the nerves are held, and these acts without control of the mind or will, sometimes in convulsive action or in twitches and frustration. I've seen all of the above. I have videos of all these over the years. Or else in the paradox of being muscularly weak and strong, uh, and strong consecutively and in a rapid succession. There are many accidents through possession which are called the visitation of God. Slips of the hand, unaccountable failures of the mind which are left unexplained. But these happenings are not really accidents. They're the carrying out of the real designs of unseen spirits being malignantly concern in the world of men. The insidious spirits have prepared for this manipulation or interference with the person by their slow dulling of the mind, the weakening, listen to this, the weakening of the reasoning powers, which pre prevents him from seeing the outcome of certain step or action, the disuse of their own judgment. It says here, the disuse of the judgment and the imperceptible, imperceptible loss of making a decision and independent action of the will so that it snaps as to speak at a critical moment with fatal results. But with, the, with this, listen to what the author is writing us here. With this passivity of mind and will, the emissaries of Satan cannot have the full control of the body, which they really keenly desire. So, okay, you're not that big of a mess. God can get us out of the problem. That's why he gave us deliverance, okay? Naturally, we're being chastised because we're not repenting in areas of our lives, and that gives ground to the enemy, brothers and sisters. You can't do deliverance without preaching repentance. So the last paragraph in closing uh, today, and I pray some of you that have been waiting for me to do this, this uh, since last Wednesday, it's being done. 
in affecting the body, the spirits of evil also interfere with all the functions at various times. We all know what various means. So at different times, they can affect us. And in various degrees, such as eating, see, they can even control our eating habits, our drinking habits, and the swallowing of food, the mastication of food, the saliva, the phlegm, the breath, the breathing, the physical weakness, the strength, the stiffness of our limbs, the heaviness, heat and cold, agreeable or disagreeable feelings. These are all areas the enemy can operate in us and take over various times. Understand, you got to study this whole book, but we're in chapter seven and you got to do every subtitle can't just hear it one time, uh, you know, mind you, this is the eighth time Brother Charlie's going through this book. I've had the book for 30 years. I have a lot of books. This doesn't replace the Bible. This just teaches us about how the enemy can operate in any of us at any given time. So let's finish it. Let me read this again. The Mastication of food, the saliva, the phlegm, the breath and breathing, physical weakness and strength, stiffness of limbs. Because we get a lot of testimonies when we start rebuking some of these symptoms and we stay on it and we stand on the full armor of God, the word of God that I am the Lord that healeth thee. And you start binding and loosening and praying, get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You're going to win a lot of these little wrestling matches. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. God's got a sense of humor, but that's where faith, if you have the faith of the mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be ye removed. And God, because you're honoring the word of God, will bring down his glory and free you. But you've got to hold your deliverance, people. Heaviness, heat and cold, agreeable, disagreeable. How about sleeplessness, dreams, restlessness at night? All can be irritated and produced or exaggerated by the presence and the will of the evil spirits in our life. So that's the middle of page 173. Uh, I thank God for all you that have been following me, and I hope there's a benefit for your lives through me taking the time and reading and doing a little book study, not just reading it, but expressing my heart and what I'm learning. And Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I'm going to attempt to go back in and catch up to what we're doing here with the book study, and we'll be starting again on page 173, the manipulation of the body. So God bless you all. Thanks for listening and keep me in prayer. Amen.